Right, I'm down here on the Metz Lake in the Colm Valley. First time I've ever been to this lake. Got a little session in front of me. I actually got down here last night, late. Um, wanted to do a little bit of a recce, a walk round, hopefully find a few fish. And that's exactly what happened. Got halfway round the lake, got this little bay just off the open water with a long finger arm down to the left here, which is choked with weed and there was a few fish milling around. I only had maybe an hour of daylight left, so I've got the kit round here. I flicked the leads out, found a couple of nice drops in amongst the weed, and settled in for the night. Just put a few pouches of boilies around there, just enough for a bite sort of thing. And uh, woke up this morning, and there's been a lot of random fizzing around this, the entrance to this bay here. Um, odd areas sort of nothing concentrated. It's in a few fish show. There seems to be a decent concentration of carp in this area. So I'm quite happy to, to stay here. Um, I've brought the rods in now. I've had a quick walk around the rest of the lake, bits that I didn't look at last night, just to be sure that I wasn't missing out on anything elsewhere. And it does seem like there's a good concentration of fish in this zone. So what I'm gonna do now is get my spots perfect lay out a bit of a feast for them. I've bought some, uh, some boilies and some hemp. I'm gonna crush a few of the boilies up, uh, get the, the rods out there, and I'm gonna pretty much leave them out there for the next 24 hours. Uh, let, the, let the area settle down, let the fish creep back in. Uh, hopefully they'll be nice and settled. It seems to be their favor in this area. So the disturbance won't, I'm hoping, push them away. And um, we'll see what happens tomorrow morning. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a result. Basically just having a little lead around one of the areas where we saw a lot of mid-morning fizzing. They were obviously moving through. They were spending a lot of time here, so I didn't put a, didn't put a rig on them straight away. Just thought I'd let them have their little, little bit of peace and quiet and lead it up when it quietened off this afternoon to find out exactly why they're in there. And there's a lot of a lot of leaf litter from the trees, a lot of chod, bits of silkweed, and lots of various you can see horrible stuff. But in amongst it there's the odd better bit. And I've just got to locate a suitable area for a rig. So I'm just gone out just beyond the weed there. There's a nice firmer area. And if I just bring the lead back up, 
flick it in, you can see no leaf litter, no real signs of any sort of weed. It's definitely a firmer area, possibly been cleaned off by the fish. And there you go. Let's bring it back in. Totally presentable. Nothing coming back on the lead. I'll just go a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right just to see the extent of it. And I'll feel it down there. That's about a foot to two foot. To the left. Possibly picked up a little bit of little bit of silkweed there, look. Much drier. Does hold some nice natural food there. So we go a little bit to the right now. I can feel it down, it's nice and hard. I'd imagine that would be absolutely clean. There you go. Absolutely clean. Do another couple of feet to the right. And that, now that. is a little bit softer. So you're coming off that harder. There's a tiny bit of silkweed there. Once again. There you go. Give it a little pull along the bottom. There's a few taps of gravel in there. Picked up a tiny bit of weed on the way back in. That's just surface weed. And that's what you've got on the bottom there. So the cleanest spot is exactly where I had it the first time. And that's presentable, could probably present a, a bottom bait on that without any problem at all. Nice there. Just a little tiny bit of. I'm quite as happy with that as I thought it would be. Slightly. That's better. Okay, so it's early evening. The rod went in perfectly earlier. Got sweet drops right up against the weed. In the area of activity from this morning where I see a lot of fizzing and a few shows. So those two rods are sorted. Also down on my inside margin, uh, I found a nice clear spot in an area that mid morning there was a lot of fizzing and activity. So that deserved attention and I've got a rod there now, ready for tomorrow. Still a lot of fish showing and fizzing up in the channel to my left here. Um, they're still in residence, so they've got to come past me to get out to open water tonight. So if this morning's anything to go by, they were in front of me, fizzing, active. I've now got rods and bait on the spots. So tomorrow morning, let's see what happens. It's looking rosy, so I'm confident. It's a fresher one this morning. 
quiet night last night. Um, didn't really hear much after about 11 o'clock. Um, this morning I've seen one subtle show over the margin rod and I've seen one really good fish, maybe 20 yards past my spot, um, but it's a much quieter morning than yesterday morning. If you think back to yesterday, we had that low cloud base, it was a lot warmer, mild, bit of drizzle. This morning, it's a clear morning, the temperatures have dropped overnight. So it seems to be like they're taking a little bit longer to get going, but it's early days yet. I've seen a few little patches of bubbles coming up and as I say, we've had those few shows early on. So things are still looking up. There's definitely fish in the area just whether they want to get their heads down and have a little feed this morning. So we'll see what happens. We've got plenty of time yet. Here we go. Standing there just then, there's a real air of expectancy over the lake. The birds hadn't turned up this morning onto the spots and the few coots that had drifted over just carried on. They didn't stop and drop. So yeah, there was, there was that weird atmosphere, you sort of half expecting something to happen, but you weren't seeing any signs of the fish on the, on the zone. There was no fizzing like there was yesterday morning. So it was really weird and that tape just came out of the blue, ripping, you know. Um, just a bit gutted that I lost it, to be honest. Just bumped off, what can you do? Barbless hooks and weed, never a good mix, but there, there we go. Right, so we've wound in, gone and had a little look round. It's a nice sunny morning. Creeping round, there's a little lake behind here and I um, found a few fish, a couple of nice ones. They're in really short. So whilst it's quiet round here, I'm gonna take a rod or two, go round there, lower them in, see if we can't get a bite off these fish that are milling around in the edge. Uh, it looks like a nice bit of fishing to be had. I'm gonna leave the base camp set up here. So I've got something to come back to tonight got an established spot out there. We've had a bite off it this morning. So we're gonna go and do a little bit of stalking, see what happens, and then maybe come back. If it looks game on round there, we might even move this evening. We've got plenty of time, so let's go and see what we can make happen. braid sink from the inside edge back from the lead core to the weed. 
so it's down in that hole. Right, okay, so that little group of fish had moved away. There was one single carp here, uh, just milling around. Basically waited for him to mooch off over the gravel bar. We've gone down, flicked the, the rig in, it dropped just short of where I wanted it first time. It was still presentable. There was a little bit of straggly weed there. So I've had another little, uh, another little go and it's dropped in on the, the cleaner area right at the base of this little slope, just as it rises up and that seems to be where they're happy to drop down and eat. Gives me a nice line lay through the surface scum and all the candy floss weed. And I have you managed to sink the braid nicely from the lead core back to the, that leading edge of the weed. So everything seems to have settled down nicely. Just put a handful of boilies in, four or five boilies, just crushed them between my fingers. That did attract the attention of the swans briefly, but I quickly legged it into the next door swim threw a handful under a bush and immediately they've tracked off and gone un under there. So that sort of saved the day a little bit. Just got to wait now patiently and watch and see if they come back. Right, so we're giving it a couple of hours in this little stalking swim, fishing in the edge. The fish, when the sun came out, the fish have pushed back. They're now sitting in a corner right under the weed. Um, I've had one visitation, one's come back to the spot, circled round, and he's gone and sat under a bush. So we're gonna wrap it up now, get that rod in, um, get back to the other swim, get prepped for the evening. I'm gonna flick a little bit of bait out here and maybe come back and, uh, and have a look to see if they've got back on it, maybe sort of later this afternoon, but certainly tomorrow morning at some stage, we'll, we'll, let, we'll have another little go in here. Um, it's definitely a feeding spot, so we've seen some good fish here. So we, we'll give it another go, but for now, we're gonna vacate this little area and get back to the main, the main swim. Right, let's get the rod in. This is the rig that I've been using for this session and it's absolutely perfect for the sort of spots that I'm fishing out in the lake here. Nice, firm, clean drops in amongst the weed and the silt. The reason I use this rig, which is called the, the D-Rig, it has a number of properties that really aid your angling. Number one, it's got anti-tangle properties. Number two, because of that stiff-ish material, kicks away from the, the leader and lays your hook link out nice and straight. Those sort of mechanics are aided by a number of different things. Firstly, the loop that I use at the swivel end, a nice big loop, and that's tied with a perfection loop knot, which allows the material to exit from the knot in a beautiful straight line. Secondly, I use a whipping knot at the hook end, which again allows a nice clean exit from the eye of the hook. And again, the hook is an important factor. I use an outturned eye hook so that you're not closing the gape up with this style of material. So you've got lovely separation here. The way that this works using a waft the hook bait is that the, the hook will sit on the bottom substrate flat, like so. And the waft the hook bait just hovers above. So when that's picked up by the fish, it allows the hook to drop underneath the hook bait there, like a, a sort of claw mechanism. As you can see, every time it picks up, it just drops. And that's because you're using a loop on the swivel and that nice D and the hooks there sitting underneath the bait in the perfect prime location to catch on the bottom lip. 
One of the critical things about this rig is the type of material that's used in its construction. This one's called ThinkLink. It's a material that we've worked on for the last couple of years, really uh, based around the use of this style of rig. Um, so it looks a little bit like a fluorocarbon, sort of the translucent sort of opaqueness to it. That couldn't be any further from the truth. It hasn't got that very stiff and wiry property to it at all. It's got a nice flexibility to it. So it allows a lot of movement and turning. So that's a really important thing. Quite a few of the consultants, including myself, and Gaz and Marcus, we've used it with this particular rig um, and others, and it performs really well. One of the great things about this material, uh, as opposed to some of the others that we've used in the past, is that it's got an incredibly high knot strength. And so it's got a durable property to it that aids in use for big fish fishing or when you're using it in the weed. And for this particular rig, it's absolutely perfect because it retains that movement. And as you can see, that's incredibly important when you're fishing this style of rig. So to tie this rig, it's ever so simple. Just take 12 inches of the Think Link material and an outturned eye hook. Thread the Think Link through the eye of the hook and then I will create a snell knot, which is a whipping knot. Uh, to do that, you make a loop on the back of the hook, bring the tag end to the bend of the hook, and then taking that loop with the bottom end, you just basically whip six times up the shank of the hook, take the tag end, tighten it down onto the shank of the hook itself, and then gently bed it down, which creates a lovely tight whipped knot on the back of the hook and a clean exit through the eye. The tag end is then used to create the D, which I'll thread on a hook ring swivel, bring it through the eye and then gently blob down to leave a decent sized D on the back of the hook as so. Next, I'll thread on a tungsten dropper which I pull all the way down, out of the way, whilst I'm constructing the rig. And then measuring out, depending on the, the type of substrate, I, I like to fish this rig between sort of four and a half and six and a half inches. Um, I'll then form a loop, depending on what length I want the rig, finished rig to end up. Um, and then I tie what's called a perfection loop knot. It's a really simple knot to tie. You basically create your first loop then a second loop that goes round the first. You then tuck the tag end between the two loops and pull the second loop through the first loop. And that creates your perfection loop knot. Bed it down with a bit of um, moisture and you've got a really strong knot with a perfectly formed loop and a perfectly straight exit from your hook link material like so. So I fished this rig on a helicopter leader setup. Reasons for that is that I can move this top bead if there's a little bit of a softer drop or I think there's a, a little bit of uh, silt out there. And it just allows that rig to, to lay out beautifully on that, that substrate with the lead plugged. Um, and as you can see, you've got that little bit of travel there. So that's the way I like to fish this rig. Super efficient, really, really effective, one of my favourite rigs. Right, we're going to uh, get the rods out. Basically, all I've changed for tonight is that my right hand rod, I noticed yesterday that there's there's quite a, a high weed bed between me and the spot wasn't overly happy with the line lay going out to that area um, and when I got the bite this morning it was on the left hand rod with the the real perfect line lay so what I'm going to do is I'm just I've had a little lead about this afternoon and I'm going to shift that right hand rod across just jump it over um, so fishing out to the same area, I've just changed the angle and the line lay is just much better up the side of this weed bed. Sort of 
found out exactly where it ends and I'm laying the line up the side of that. So I've got perfect line lay now on two rods out to that spot. I'm gonna drop the margin rod back in tonight because just before first light this morning, a, a fish showed over the top of that. Um, so it's definitely, although we didn't get a bite on it this morning, it's definitely worth putting back in there. You know, we have been told that a lot of fish do get caught out of the margins on this lake. So you can't ignore that sort of advice from the, uh, from the bailiffs and whatnot. So that rod's gonna go back in there and, and we've seen fish in the area, so. The bird life has caned those spots this afternoon. They're, um, they've been out there diving over my area and to that end, obviously having a bite as well off there, um, I'm gonna to top it back up. I'm not gonna put the same sort of quantity as I did yesterday afternoon. Um, pretty much taken most of the hemp out of the equation. Uh, just chopped boilies, some crumbled, and a few whole ones, and I'm gonna just top the spots up and fishing the same bottom bait rigs out there, the really, really firm drops. Fishing the sort of back edge of a bar. Um, I've only got maybe half a rod length clear before I start to pick up the weed, so, you know, just going slightly down the shelf, um, you know, it seems like that's where they, the, the, the most fizzing was going on on that first morning. So both rods are going out on the same presentations as the previous night. So that's the Fink Link D-Rig and the rod in the margin was quite choddy down there. So uh, I think I'm going to put out a multi-rig on that rod. Uh, just so it keeps the hook up out of the out of the debris. Um, again, all I'll do is put a handful of bait around that rod once it's gone in. Um, so yeah, basically all I'm going to do is uh, clip these rigs on, put a couple of wafters on the two rods that are going out onto the main baited spot, steam them straight, and uh, they'll go out there. The multi rig will just um, just be lowered into the margins. So. Yeah, we're getting ready to, to rock for the evening. Hopefully the night will bring some action. If not, first thing tomorrow morning, we'll be up looking and hopefully see a few carp. Maybe get one in the net, it'd be nice. Lovely to soak in the atmosphere in the evenings on these old Colm Valley pits. Such a, an important place in carp fishing history, this valley. And, you know, this Metz Lake, it's really got it all. And, you know, the bats were flying about and you've got the odd plane going over. It really is a special place to be. I've really enjoyed it.
fish over me this morning um, but I've got a massive group of tufties that keep drifting in from open water and they're caning the spot. Uh, they've picked me up a few times, they're moving the hook bait around, I'm fishing on some sort of fine pea gravel and uh, it's definitely uh, turned the hook point over on one of the hooks so I'm just concerned that that's going to cut, that's you know it's cost me a bite um, so what I've done is I've skipped one of the rods in, changed it over to one of the beak point patterns, uh, the curve point, gonna fish it on a little spinner rig, really low to the deck, fishing it on one of the uh, quick change swivels, not a ring swivel, just tied a little loop to the end of the bottom swivel eye there. Fairly stiff uh, material, um, so it kicks away from the leader nicely. And we're going to fire that back out there and um, you know hopefully that is going to protect the hook point from the ravages of these birds this morning see if we can't get a bite charged off on a left hand kite he's gone through a big heavy heavy old reed bed out the back of the swim I can still feel him shaking his head just feel him moving now caught from right in amongst the birds oh there he goes There he is, there's the bubbles all coming up. He ain't moving yet. Slowly starting to feel him, starting to come now. I'll just keep the pressure on. When you've got no direct pressure on him now, from the, from the weed bed to the back of the fish, you can see now, look how easily this could all go wrong. And this looks like one of the older ones. And oh. Just got to keep pressure on him. Yes! Yes! What a relief that is. <laughs>
so pleased with this one. Lovely dark, scaly, Colne Valley corker. It's been a tough session. This one's made it all worthwhile. Come on the last morning. So we're gonna pack up, get back to the van, get on the road back to Ken, hopefully miss the traffic. But I'll be driving home a happy man. Just how we like him, he's beautiful. Well pleased with him.